works. Okay, so you start in infant school. You then go into junior school. You then, after that, you go into comprehensive school, yeah, or grammar school, depending on where you are. It could be called different things, but it's kind of the same thing, okay? So after that, you go into sixth form if you want. So you leave school at 16, but you have an optional two-year thing called sixth form, which you have to do if you want to go to university. There's no other way, like, because the qualifications you do there, yeah, the, which were the A-levels, are, they are the things that you need in order to get into college and university, yeah? Without A-levels, you're fucked. You're not getting in. Simple as that. So you've got to do A-levels. You've got to get decent marks on them. Now, the thing about A-levels is that they were supposed to be, a, the A-levels used to be two years, yeah? And that was, you were ages 16 to 18 while you did A-levels, yeah? My year, they changed to ASs and A2s. They made that change in my year. And then what they did is they lowered the marks on A2s across the board because there were too many complaints that apparently our exams were too easy. So in order to deal with that, everyone in my year, everybody got a grade lower on everything that they did than was predicted for them. And our predictions were pretty good. Yeah, which was ridiculous. Yeah. I had, I did five ASs. Yeah, I did five. And I got four A's and a B. Yeah. Then I did my A2s. And I got two B's, a C, and a D. Which fucking sucked. My GCSEs, I got 13 A's. Yeah, GCSEs are ridiculous. You have to do fucking 15 subjects. And you go to multiple exams in each one. GCSEs are the most fucking stressful thing. People kill themselves over GCSEs. Jesus. Stressful. I think I got 13 A's, an A star, and a B. And that was it. But yeah. They they fucked us pretty badly. I, I still got into the university I wanted to because they were quite accepting of that. Because I wanted to go to De Montfort University because I actually... I all, Of all the universities I visited, I liked Leicester's town the most, yeah? And I wanted to kind of get away from my parents and I wanted to do the independence thing. So I went to De Montfort, who had a, a pretty decent university. Definitely not top end, but pretty good. So, yeah. Fucking A2s, man. Black mark on my record. Yeah, I was a good student for the most part. I had to be driven by my parents to do it, though. I was I procrastinated like a motherfucker, and I kind of still do. Self-discipline's very difficult for me. Okay. Yeah, I've already had that question about Australia, so I won't answer that one. Any plans on doing any more games with Angry Joe? Two of you are awesome together. Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. That's from the Nets rack. Yeah, I love doing plays with Angry Joe because he gets super angry and into it. It's fun. I get to be the the calm guy for once, which is cool. I think we should do more multiplayer for XCOM when they release the expansion because they're rebalancing the multiplayer. Yeah. So I'll do it that way. Should be cool. I'm looking forward to that. And I'll crush him just like I did last time. <laughs> It's actually what we did one more game than the ones that we put out on the channels where I, I killed him again and I did it in such a sneaky way. I managed to get a floater with a plasma grenade up on the roof of this church. He didn't see it and I like plasma grenaded his entire squad. It was horrible. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, we lost the footage for that one, but that was fun. Okay. Would you be interested in eventually casting some Dota 2? Maybe, but I don't know enough about the game and I think it would take too long to learn. So, I'll probably just stick to StarCraft. It's a cool idea, but, and I think I could do it pretty well, but I'd need to know everything. And you need to know even more to cast Dota 2, just because you need to know items, hero combinations, hero counters. They're constantly adding new ones. Like, oh, like unless I was playing that game constantly, I don't think I could cast it. I just don't think it's possible. StarCraft's a bit more cerebral. It's less about, like, just knowing build orders, it's less about knowing counters and nonsense, and even then the counters are pretty obvious it's like, everyone knows that marines get countered pretty hard by colossus, everyone knows that siege tanks get countered pretty hard by immortals, that's not a, that's not difficult okay verbalosity, how long does it take for the average piece of content to take to make from start to finish it depends on it, so 
it probably takes me, personally, about two hours to do content patch. But it takes Chris more time, yeah? So the only reason content patch doesn't take me like five hours a day is because I offload the editing to Chris and I pay him for that, yeah? So we split the workload on content patch, yeah? I do the research and then I, I do the commentary. It probably takes me, again, about two hours to do the research gathering and fact-checking and then actually do the content itself. WTF is could vary... Because, like, obviously, WTF is li done live, and if I don't do a retake, then it takes about as long as it would take to make that video. But I have to do the research beforehand. I'll generally play several hours of the game before that, so it varies. Like, Saints Row took about nine hours, I think, to make that video, because a good seven of them... Yeah, a good seven of them were playing the game to research it, and then... I redid it. Like, my first video sucked, so I did it again from start to finish. So, yeah. Dota... Dota can be awkward because, like, of all of the games that I play, I only kind of pick the ones that are kind of fun. So I play a bunch of Dota, and it ends up being, like, maybe 1 20th of the games that I actually play end up being commentated. So that doesn't take too long. But what I've got to do for that is I've got to film it first and do the commentary. So, yeah. Don't even start the whole research thing. Like, a lot of the times when I'm playing a game, I'm looking for faults with it, and I'm looking for things that I enjoy. I'm not actually playing it. I'm, I'm literally researching it. I'm like, can I break this? Will there be a problem here? And more often than not, I'll see something that I think might be a problem, and I'll have to try and just push further to find out if it is. So, yeah. It is definitely research. I'm not going to lie. I have fun with some games, and then I fucking hate others. So, And I've still got to play a good amount of them. So, yeah. Playing games you don't like for a living is not the best living, but such is the way of things. I have a very fortunate position and a lucky job, so every now and again you gotta eat a bad game. Okay. What else we got? Hey Chance, Mike B will be on the podcast again. Absolutely, yeah. Love Mike B. He's on the short list of people that we will definitely bring on the podcast again. The Orcs Must Die collab was fun to watch. Yeah, he's great. He's he's a really cool guy, and I recommend you check him out. YouTube.com slash aka Mike B, I believe. He is awesome. I will happily collab with Mike B again, and I will happily have him on the show, because he's great. In fact, we should do that next couple of weeks. Lockdown 6. How do people generally get into competitive gaming as players? By being good at it. <laughs> it's as simple as that. Like, when there's a scene, generally there'll be, like, a, a lot of initial tournaments. And the good players will be involved in it. It's like, competitive, say, when competitive Hearthstone starts happening, which it will, you'll see people like Crip, and you'll see people like Trump, be the initial wave of competitive players because they're the best at it. Simple as that. And then maybe they aren't the best later on. Yeah, It's like talking about StarCraft, right? Some of the best players early on with StarCraft before the Koreans really got a hold of it were people like Jinro and people like TLO and things like that. And then Jinro obviously eventually fell off and retired. TLO's still competitive, but back then he was a lot he was a lot stronger. White Ra, you know. White Ra considered to be one of the best foreigners for the longest time. Now he isn't. But, you know, those guys got in because they were, they got in on the ground floor and they were good at it. It's as simple as that. That's how you get into competitive gaming. Don't suck. Enter tournaments. It's very easy to actually get into competitive gaming. It's not easy to be good at it. Hearthstone, I think, will have a decent amount of a competitive scene because it'll be popular enough to justify it. Once to put a spectator mode in there. I'll cast the shit out of Hearthstone. I have cast card games in the past. I cast the Spoils and I cast the WoW TCG ages ago, years and years ago on WoW Radio on a show called On the Cards that I did with Octail. It was great. I'll happily cast Hearthstone. Me and Trump casting Hearthstone. It's gonna be it. I'm the play-by-play. -play. He's the analyst. Okay. Do you think you will return to DreamHack at some point in the future? Maybe. Maybe. It's, it's a long flight, and I don't like flying that much, and I usually lose, like, DreamHack... I'm not even going to say DreamHack pays badly, because, like, all tournaments do. Like, you, you don't get paid much. Like, if you were doing it for a living and only that, and you didn't have a big YouTube channel, I could totally see you doing as many events as possible. But for me, it's, like, it's a huge, huge money sink. And traveling is just a drain. I hate, I hate flying. So, yeah, I mean, I, I might do it. I know DreamHack's got maybe some plans to do some American stuff. They mentioned that years ago. I don't know if it'll still happen, but... Hmm. We'll see. I I love DreamHack, but it is hard work. Very hard work. 
and it's definitely no cakewalk because they don't hire enough casters or maybe they do hire enough casters they just they then work the casters to the bone which is fine it's not like our job is that hard so it's cool okay boston bag party what do you think about mac gaming scene expanding well, i have no interest in it personally i don't see why it wouldn't but you talk about a gaming scene expanding when you've got components that are more expensive and less powerful and game and just rigs that are generally not designed for it doesn't seem to be a lot of interest in it so i mean i'm cool with it expanding obviously but i would i don't think i'd ever switch to a mac that's very unlikely to happen it's not enough flexibility i mean you can put together a hackintosh but in reality you're looking mostly at bespoke units and i don't want to do that you know i want a machine that is very specifically designed to cater to my needs and a mac will not do that okay what else we got i might have to take another break soon actually this has been another hour i'll do one more question i'll take a break and then i'll come back and try and finish them i should get pretty tired i've been talking for like two hours so i guess it's to be expected what do we got what do you think esports will be in the next five to ten years? More popular, more varied, and on streaming platforms via IPTV. The way that uh, television has, is becoming more and more relevant. In ten years, cable TV will be far, far less relevant than it is now. It might even be dead entirely. Because why would you? You know, IPTV is much better. You know, streaming is much better. It's superior. Simple as that. You watch the shows when you want to watch the shows. Mad Katsuni is claiming that her question or his question has been skipped. It hasn't, actually. It's a couple of, It's actually next on the list, so I'll deal with that in a minute. But, uh, hmm. yeah, I, it's just going to... It'll be more popular. I don't see esports going away as a concept because there are enough people playing games that want to watch people play games competitively to make a scene viable. We don't know which games it will be, but it will happen. It will be more popular, certainly. And it probably won't be on TV because TV is bad. All right, I'm going to take a quick break, folks, and then when I come back, I will do... We're going into the third hour, actually. Yeah. Let's do that.
welcome, welcome back to, I suppose, hour three of the Q&A. I always tempted to put this on YouTube, actually, because it seems to have turned out pretty well, but I don't know. I'll have to think about it. All right. Let's get back to it. So, Mad Kitsune. I don't know, maybe you've been asked about this, but are we going to get your opinion about Dark Souls 2 before it releases? Well, that depends on whether or not they give me a review code before it releases. <laughs> it's really simple as that. Obviously, giving my opinion on it now makes no sense because I haven't bloody played it. So, I'll have a think about it. I'll have a think. Obviously, I will try and do coverage of it. My last attempt at doing coverage of Dark Souls was fucking terrible, and I apologize for that. But, yeah, I, I'll, I'll... Yeah, probably. <laughs> I'll focus mostly on whether or not it's a good PC port, I think. But, yeah, I'll, I'll certainly play it, and I'll most likely do a video of it. I'd be very surprised if I didn't. But I'm more anticipated releases. Will you do any more Dota 2 videos with Purge? Or have you stopped it playing it completely? No, I haven't stopped playing it completely. I play just a lot less right now because I'm playing a lot of Hearthstone. So I, I'm still playing Dota 2. Just I'll play maybe like one match every couple of days, if that. I will do more videos with Purge. That is going to happen. I promise it will. Promise checked. Have I ever played Yu-Gi-Oh! from Halls 94? Yes. Once, I think. Not the card game. I played like the, I played a, a game on the DS. I think that was okay. I guess. So I'm just playing with this. This is a electronic dice which transmits a Bluetooth signal to an iOS device. I believe. It's supposed to light up. I'm not sure why it's not doing that. Did I turn it off or something? Maybe I turned it off. Oh, there we go. Yeah, see. Lots of different colors. Yeah, it. it this interface is with a gaming platform on tablets so you can use it to control board games i don't know if the board games are any good but someone sent me they sent me a trade sample of it so i'm gonna try it out it's interesting anyway yeah i, I think i only played it once on ds it definitely wasn't my thing i don't think it seems okay i mean obviously it's a pretty damn popular card game but i never really got into it so i don't know a huge amount about it okay yeah what else do we got how and why did you choose Jesse and Dodge to be your partners when you created the TGS podcast? Most, well, one, because I knew them very well. Uh, two, because they were very popular in terms of TGS, so it made sense. Three, they were already kind of faces of the network as it was, so that made sense. And also because I wanted to get a very specific combination of personalities in there. And I think that it works pretty well. So you have bubbly enthusiasm. You've got... Madcap nonsense, and then you've got kind of straight man serious me anchoring the show, and then you can add, say, one more person in there to fill it out. I think it's a good combo. It works pretty well, and it seems to have. I mean, you know, show's been going on for like what two years now, and it's very very popular. It's one of the most popular gaming podcasts there is. There are very few that are more popular. I think the Rooster Teeth podcast is. Bombcast might be, but the problem is their numbers aren't public, so it's hard to know. But we're pr we're doing pretty well. That's all I can say there. Alright, what are your thoughts on Homeworld Shipbreakers from VMAX262? I believe I've covered this in Content Patch. All I will say is that I'm very excited to see what they come up with. Uh, I don't have any thoughts on the game itself because I don't. there's not enough information about it yet. But the I did cover the name change and the IP maybe about a week or two ago in Content Patch. So if you want more information, get it there. Sound Inverse, do you think streaming is a good way for smaller channels to pick up subscribers? I think it helps, but I also think it's kind of a different audience. There is some crossover, but the content you do on streaming is not the content you should be doing for VODs on YouTube, right? If you do that stuff, then you're probably in for a bad time, and you're most likely not going to do a lot of good, good things. There's a reason why I don't upload most of my streams to YouTube, because I don't think they're good enough quality to be there. I, an edited VOD is a fixed-length presentation, right? And it's not reactive. It's reactive to what's going on in the game, but it's not reactive to the audience. A stream is reactive to the audience, and it's a little bit more on the fly. Plus, production issues, lower quality in general. Yeah. I think that you can do it, but honestly, you should focus on one or the other. Focus on one or the other. Don't do both. Either try and be a popular streamer or try and be a popular YouTuber, but build different content for each. If you want to do both, I only really started doing both in a major way when I was already popular on YouTube as it was. I did some limited streaming before that, but yeah, you. I think you should focus on one or the other. I really do. This song. I dig my hole, you build a wall. One day that wall is gonna fall. Too good, too good. Go build that so 
good. Looking forward to Transistor just for the soundtrack. Yeah, so... Think about what kind of content works in that respect. Focus on one of them, don't do both. I don't think you can build a sub count on YouTube by streaming, and I don't think you... Well, you can build an audience on Twitch through YouTube, but you already need the base on YouTube in the first place. So if you don't have that base on YouTube, you should be focusing on doing nothing but YouTube content to build that base before you go into streaming. Because then what you can do is you can take advantage of the fact that you have a base of people that watch your VODs and say, Hey, now I'm doing something different. Try and do it the other way around? What the? No. No, it won't work. Yeah. So focus on one or the other and think about how your formats can work in a VOD better than they would on a live stream and vice versa. Don't do the same thing that you do on a live stream than what you do on a VOD. Yeah. Even my Hearthstone, when I stream that, it's different because I'm reactive to the audience. And I'm not reactive to the audience on my main Hearthstone stuff. So the content has a different flavor. You've got to make sure that that differentiation is in there. Because they are two different mediums, and you should take advantage of those mediums in the best way possible. I'll probably talk more about this when I do my the streaming panel that I'm doing at the Escapist Expo. I'm sure that will come up. Waltzki asks, will Windows and the OSX gaming scene 99.99% die off if Linux hits on with such as St Steam OS? Okay, would. Yep, I, I get what you mean in there. Can Windows and OSX stick around? Well, I think that even if Steam OS does come along in a big way and shake things up, then the Windows scene is still going to be very popular. Basically, it comes down to support, yeah? We could move over to SteamOS. We could just move over to a Linux-based derivative. I mean, if everyone moves over to SteamOS, it'll be way easier to move over to another distro, that's for sure. Because you, what you're talking about is getting support for Linux. And for what I've been told, Linux has the potential to be a lot better than Windows. It's just kind of not yet. So, I think that, yeah, we, they, I don't think they would survive in that scenario. I don't think there'd be much point. I mean, we already have problems getting PC ports on Windows. Do you really think that people that make games for consoles are going to say, yeah, we'll totally do a Windows and a SteamOS port. That sounds like a fucking phenomenal idea. No, they probably won't. It's going to be one or the other. One will survive, one will fall. I'm hoping the best one survives. Simple as that. But it will take time for that to happen. Yeah. I wouldn't expect Windows to go anywhere for a long time. Eventually it might, though. Any progress with anything the Sega boycott? Comes from Tunes. Nope. They haven't said a damn thing. Sega are a pain in the ass. Simple as that. They refuse to apologize. They refuse to fix the, I think, 14 YouTube channels that they took off the internet permanently. And they suck as a result of that. And they will not get any coverage from me. Aside from the negative stuff, they, they fuck up. I'll happily talk about that in Content Patch. But at the end of the day, they almost cost me my career. And they didn't even fucking apologize for it. So they can get the hell out. And I know it's the Japanese wing, but I don't care. You're accountable for what other parts of your company do. Simple as that. They've made no effort to fix this problem. They, uh, they removed my strikes because they knew that there would be an uproar, and plus they were under pressure from Polaris to do it, but they didn't remove the strikes on other channels. <sighs> it's so stupid. Scruffy404, is it worth to run SLI and cross Crossfire? Is it too fiddly? Well, it's not a case of being too fiddly, it's a case of it being a bit unreliable. Like, if you've got the money, of course you should SLI a crossfire, because you can always turn it off, yeah? There's no... There's no disadvantage. If a game somehow runs worse with SLI, which sometimes happens, because people code badly, then you can turn one of the cards off, and you don't have to worry about that. So it's good to have a second card. Most games will run better in SLI and crossfire. Some will not. So you just turn it off. You can even set profiles to do it on a game-by-game -game basis. So... Yeah, I mean, if you've got the money, I would always do that. Absolutely. But it is not efficient, yeah? From a kind of, you know, what's the... Yeah, from a price performance standpoint, it's not efficient. For the most part. I know some people, I think it was 660s, GTXs, a lot of people were SLIing those because you could get so much clout out of those and they worked really, really well on a price performance basis. But most of the time, SLI is not good price performance. So, of course, you should be considering that if you're limited on funds. From Not Jesse Cox. Seems legit. Last game you finished on PC. Brothers, Tale of Two Sons. I don't generally finish games. I don't have the time. But Brothers, I played from start to finish in one sitting. And it was the best experience I've ever had. It was awesome. All right. Okay, well, almost out of questions. So, we'll do a few more. Would TB be interested in bringing anyone from TGN onto the podcast? That's from Sound in Reverse. I don't know anyone on TGN. At least, uh, TGN as a brand is... I I could immediately identify. It's like, oh, c -Nanas. He's with Machinima. I hope he still is, because that would be really awkward if he wasn't. <laughs> I 